What's up? Hello, everybody. Great to hang out with you for another live stream here. For those of you guys who are watching the replay of this, a couple quick notes for you. One, you can watch this quicker um, by holding down shift and then the greater than key or less than key to slow it down or just click the little gear icon on your player there and you can uh, speed up the playback and watch this in like double speakers what I prefer to do. Also, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon so that you get notifications when we do live stream every Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern time here and the goal here is just to bring you guys up to speed on everything that's been changing and happening in the online video space over the previous week and just review some of those news and updates because you guys know it's important to stay on top of all the changes that are happening all the time in this rapidly developing platform in order to continue to be able to reach people and impact their lives with the message that we're spreading through our videos. And so today we've got some big changes to talk about regarding YouTube. Last week was mostly about Facebook video and what they're doing, but today we wanna to talk about some things that are happening here on YouTube and how they're giving us some new options or our viewers some new options and how they consume our content and I think you're gonna like most of it but we'll go through this and, and see how it goes so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna be recording this as a live well as a podcast episode if you're not subscribed already to the video creators podcast you can do that just search SoundCloud iTunes Stitcher Google Play Spotify just search for video creators you'll find it and we got new episodes there every Tuesday. I'm going to record this here today as, a, as an episode for that. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go just go through the content here with you guys. And then we're going to do tons of Q&A. Um, I'm going to leave time at the end. Um, Trina, my producer, is in the chat here with you guys. And she will be taking your questions and giving them to me. Um, and so that we can make sure that we get as many of them as possible. So if you got questions, leave them in the chat. And we'll get to them here at the end. All right. Okay, hold on one second. Let me hit record and I'm gonna start this and then we're gonna dig into some of these changes. Here we go. Hello creators, how are you guys? It's great to hang out with you again for another Video Creators Podcast episode like we do every Tuesday here on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Google Play, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcasts. It's great to hang out with you and we got some cool stuff to talk about today about some of the changes that YouTube is making, not changes necessarily, but they're, they're adding some additional ways for our viewers to be able to consume our videos and our content on YouTube. Uh, most them are ones that I'm excited about, especially the first one we're going to talk about, but um, I'll, I'll leave it up to your discretion to <laughs> make your own judgment call of whether or not you are excited about some of these things. There's links to all this in the show notes, so you can click down there, go check it out, and um, and, and read some of these articles along with me that I'm going to be digging into here. But the first one that, I, that I'm excited about here is that YouTube TV is finally coming to smart TVs. It's coming to Roku and it is available, well it is on Roku, it's also available on Apple TV. And that just came out uh, like a week or so ago and I have been waiting for this update for a long time. As someone who subscribes to YouTube TV myself, um, I I actually really love the service. I, I signed up for it just so I could try it out to know kind of like what was going on and if it was worth money so I could talk about it kind of intelligently with, with you guys as, as creators. And I'm actually keeping my subscription. Uh, I have done the YouTube, or I've done like the Netflix trial. I don't have, I'm not a Netflix subscriber. Um, every year or two, they offer me a new trial and I go ahead and I sign up for that trial. And and then at the end of the trial, I've always canceled it. I'm like, why? I don't get it. Like, people love Netflix. Like, everyone I know is a Netflix subscriber, but I can't see why even eight bucks a month is worth this because, like, there's like nothing I want to watch is on there. It's only like really old stuff. And yeah, there's some original stuff. But other than that, it's kind of like I, I, do, I don't get it. So I I canceled. Um, I, I'm not a Netflix subscriber. I do have Amazon Prime video just because we have Amazon Prime for shipping. And there's some things on there. But, you know, I, I think I turn on Amazon Prime maybe once every... I don't know, month or less than that. I think my kids use it maybe about about the same as that. But on YouTube TV, that is something that my family and myself personally, we have been using and we do 
uh, love it. Now, it's definitely more expensive at $35 a month. Um, it's more expensive, but you get like basically all the good stuff that you would want to watch anyway. And um, and you can cancel your, your, your cable subscription because it's just recording live TV in your area. It's unlimited DVR. You can keep it for up to nine months. Watch it anytime in there. You get notif- notifications when your favorite show comes on. Uh, it's just a lot of really cool things. And uh, I, I actually really, really like it. And I also like it because YouTube is integrated into the system. So if you're doing content about different like um, like TV shows that might be popular or um, your content starts showing up as like recommended next to Home and Garden Network, you know, if you're doing like a gardening channel uh, or you just have something that's trending on YouTube at the time, there's a lot, I'm seeing a lot more integrations between the television content and the YouTube content on that app. So that the fact, it, before I could only use it if I was uh, using Chromecast from the app to Chromecast it to my TV and it worked. It was an okay experience. It didn't hold me back from using it. Um, I kind of liked it cause I could put something on from my phone for the kids in the other room straight from my phone. And then when I needed them to come time to eat or something, I could just use my phone and just turn it off from there and stop the playback, um, through Chromecast on our home network. But I really wanted it to be on the smart TV, just like it is now through Apple TV and Roku TV. Um, when we have Roku built into our, our TVs here. And so now that there's an app, I don't have to do the Chromecasting. It is just way easier. My kids can just go turn it on. Um, skipping through commercials is a lot easier on the TV than it is like with the remote than it is on the app and things. So I really like it and appreciate it. And I'm really glad that it's there. So YouTube TV is kind of like my streaming, you know, thing of choice. And uh, I am really looking forward to seeing what they do with that in the future as they continue to integrate YouTube into um, into uh, YouTube TV and kind of merging a lot of what we know of YouTube and television kind of together there. So that's a cool story um, that more and more of your of your viewers can watch on televisions a lot easier. They can record shows and get into your content. Uh, I uh, and, and by the way, your videos may or may not be in YouTube TV. Um, they most they most likely are not in YouTube TV. But the fact that they're consuming through YouTube system uh, their shows that they normally watch does give us more likelihood and chances of being of showing up you know, uh, to those people than we did before. So I'm excited about that. Another thing that is uh, an, another way that YouTube is going is giving our viewers a different way, uh, another way to consume content is this, is YouTube Go. Now YouTube Go has been around for a little while. It's it's not really that new. Um, but what is new is that they're going from it being available in 14 countries or 15 countries to over 130 countries around the globe. So if you're not familiar with YouTube Go, uh, it's a an app, a separate app that you can download. It's available for Android right now, where people in other countries who, or maybe even our own country, just if you have limited access to internet and uh, bandwidth, you can use the YouTube Go app to download the you know videos that you want, and you can then watch them offline. Now, if you have YouTube Red, if you're a YouTube Red subscriber, you can kind of already do this inside your inside the normal YouTube app, where you just download it, watch it offline, and then all the data of your viewing sessions and things syncs back to YouTube later. But this is a little bit different. This is well, actually, let me do this. Let me show you guys a little bit of a video here. And for those of you guys who are listening to the recording, I'll be back here in a second.
So it's just so it's a great way for um, the YouTube Go app. Then I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> The YouTube Go app is a great way for people who are in other countries to be able to download videos without using a lot of bandwidth. Maybe their, their internet connection is very slow or they have only limited access to Wi-Fi. And so on their device, without spending a lot of data, having to like preview videos, they can just see a quick like like little GIF image of like a motion thumbnails, giving them a preview of the videos like. They can then choose to download that and choose what quality. And it shows them approximately how big Big that file size is so they can download that video to their device inside the YouTube Go app and then watch it later when they're not connected to Wi-Fi and they're not connected to the internet. And then, uh, and the other thing is that they can also share those videos with other people who have a device, but it's not using any data. One person downloads it, but then they can share that video to other people who have the YouTube Go app and their devices just because they're in close proximity to each other using Bluetooth, I assume, um, to, to make those file transfers. So it's giving a lot more people access to our content than they otherwise had before. The stories I was reading were um, different educators in other countries would go to a local um, Wi-Fi hotspot or to a cyber cafe and they would download a lot of math tutorial videos for their classroom or they would download a lot of um, entrepreneurial business videos for, for people in their village or their community. And then they would go back and they would share those videos and they would let everyone see um, like what these videos are. They could share them to everyone in their classroom without having needing to have the internet there and give people a lot of edu like access to education that you're providing through your content, which I think is awesome. The main question in my mind about this is, well, how do we see the data behind this? And how do we know if it's being used on our channel and the impact it's having? I just look right before going, um, right, right before this recording, and I did not see this as a listed product in my Google Analytics. I, it could mean that no one is using it with my videos, but you know, normally, like you see the drop down menu at the top of your YouTube analytics where it says um, all of YouTube, YouTube gaming, kids app, you know, YouTube. Like there's, there's a lot of, you know, several different products. I did not see the YouTube Go app in there as a, as a product. And uh, so I, I'm really interested to see, <clears throat> like on YouTube Red, they, they sync the data back whenever the, the device reconnects to the internet. So the viewing sessions, the minutes watched, you know, all that kind of stuff. But if that video gets shared, you know, through someone else in the YouTube Go app, like is that, can they track the data then on what happens on that other device eventually, you know, or does that device, whenever it does connect to the internet, does it sync it back that way? If, that, if that's the case, I could see that some of the data about our videos could be very, very, you know, delayed. <laughs> and uh, personally, it doesn't really bother me. I don't think it's a big deal. I'm, I'm, I think you guys know me enough. I'm more about like, I would rather just focus on how do I deliver good value? How do I serve creators? How do I give them what they need? Rather than like, I need every single second of watch time that I can get, you know? Um, so uh, I'm, I'm patient and it's not a big deal to me, but I am looking forward to just seeing some of that data in my YouTube analytics and, and seeing how that works. So the YouTube Go app is available right now on Android. So if you're interested, go download it, use it yourself. Uh, so you know a little bit better about the experience that your viewers are having when they, when they consume your content on, on that app. Final thing I wanna talk about here is YouTube priorities for 2018. Now, this is an article. It's also linked up in the show notes. It's from, it's written by Susan Wojcicki, who's kind of like the CEO, um, top boss at YouTube. And she kind of lists my five priorities for creators in 2018. And uh, I, I figured we'll just go through some of these pretty quickly because they are, they do have some implications for us as creators, some of them more than others. I don't think any of them will hopefully be surprising. Number one, they say, she said, prioritizing transparency and communication is their number one goal. And I think we all could say yes to that, you know, communication and transparency would be great. So she said that they're going to be using their Twitter accounts more often at YT creators and at team YouTube. Uh, more to communicate more information. And so if you're not following at Team YouTube for support related things or and at 
uh, YT Creators on Twitter for more announcement related things. At least that's how it's typically been in the past. Um, go follow those two accounts, interact with them, and and that'll be and that'll how you can interact and get more info, info there. They also want to send you more emails. You can go to youtube.com slash account underscore notifications. And here at the top, almost at the top, the, you'll see these two two options. It says, I'd like to receive email updates from YouTube about, and then you can check a couple different boxes. If you want just general updates and announcements and videos, if you want email updates about your own YouTube channels and personalized tips, you can you can check that. I have them both checked, um, and the amount of email they send isn't overwhelming, so I feel like it's worth getting those emails. So youtube.com slash account underscore notifications, and that is where you can make sure those boxes are checked to get communication um, from YouTube. The second thing they say, she says is a priority is supporting your success. And this has mostly to do with the monetization. She talks about how they launched Super Chat and FameBit as additional ways for you to, to create, um, to generate revenue. And um, they're currently rolling out sponsors on some gaming channels and expanding to more later this year, which I'm looking forward to. I, I really do want to experiment with that. Um, but, um, but right now they say, hey, we're working on it. We know it's frustrating to have your videos demonetized and to have um, you know your 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 videos age gated or something. Although just one quick note, you know, on the demonetization. People freak out when they get that ye little yellow icon. They say, My video's been demonetized. Just for clarity's sake, it doesn't say your video is demonetized. It says your video is not suitable for all advertisers. That is different than saying your your video is unsuitable for all advertisers. So, like, you still have ads. You can still have ads playing against your videos. You can still generate revenue from them. From them. It's just that some creators or some advertisers don't want their videos against anything is potentially questionable, but other advertisers don't care. So just because it's yellow doesn't mean there's like no money happening on that thing, you know? So just kind of keep that in mind, but let's, let's keep going here. Um, so they're going to be doing a lot, as she said, to provide a better appeal system, quicker response times, um, and a more accurate system for how they flag videos that includes more human review and things like that. Third thing, third priority is giving people more ways to engage with video, which is what we just talked about here with YouTube Go, uh, YouTube TV, and um, YouTube Rev offers some new things. But what she's talking about here is more on the product side of how people engage. Now, she did give a stat here that I thought was interesting. It says, the numbers of viewers subscribing to creators and engaging with their channels grew every, grew every day, or I'm sorry, the number of viewers and subscribers People subscribing and engaging with their channels every day grew 70% in the last year. So there's a lot more engagement happening here than there was just this, this time last year, 70% more. So, but she says there's a lot, still a lot more opportunity. Um, they're beginning to roll out their, their community tab to creators with 10,000 subscribers or more. A few of us um, have access to YouTube Reels, which... I love YouTube Reels. I've been I've been playing with it. So if you if you're on mobile and you see a little square next to my icon, the top of your subscriptions tab in the YouTube mobile app, that's where you see the reels, which are basically like YouTube stories format, where you can shoot quick little behind the scenes updates about uh, you know for your community straight from your phone and post them there. And I've had great, I've been, the reach of that has been surprisingly high. Um, I for my audience and my community, so I I think it's worth using. And the community tab. I think you guys already know what that is, but it's when you can post photos and polls and little status updates and text and share videos and ask questions and feature content and things like that all here on your, on your channel. Other, content other than video, links and whatever you want. And it goes to the subscription um, feed on mobile devices for your for your viewers so on desktop they'll have to come straight to your community tab on your on your channel to get access to that but on um, mobile it's automatically just shows up in their feed and then she has this this little line there also we will push new innovations in ar and vr to create more immersive experiences stay tuned i am curious to hear what that is augmented reality and virtual reality so that sounds cool Number four, she says, tightening and enforcing our policies. We're all kind of like, no kidding. <laughs> but basically, she's saying we're 
we're getting outside help from other organizations to help advise us on some of these issues from hate speech and self-harm and suicide prevention and all these things like we need a lot of help and she says that um, they are doing a lot to really pay attention to how they better enforce their policies using a combination of human review and machine learning technology and they've uh, so they're, they're working hard on that she said that's a priority Fifth priority, and last one she lists here, is investing more into learning and education. And she tells a few stories about the difference education on YouTube has made in people's lives. Education on YouTube from raising chickens, fixing appliances, ask, answering quiz questions, and science stuff to uh, preparing for an interview, learning how to use Excel and everything. And she says she's investing, they're going to be investing more into that educational content by bringing on other um, partners to help them not like YouTube partner program but other like people that they'll be working with like Goodwill and other people to continue to make high quality educational content on YouTube for uh, for those people so um, the last thing guys is that there are other stories that I love sharing with you guys here. Um, but I want to jump into some of your questions here. But if you want links to the other stories, um, you have to uh, become a patron. Pa- Patreon.com slash video creators. And we'd love to have you join us over there. Every week we're sharing the extra bonus links and stories that we don't get to in the live streams. Or if you're listening to the podcast, you know I'm live streaming this right now as well. And there's people listening. We're going to get into some of the... Um, get into some of the questions and that they have here in a second. But Patreon, we'd love to have you join our community. We got you know private hangouts every month. We've got um, a, an exclusive YouTube business podcast just for patrons to help you develop the business side of your channels and how you make money on there. Um, we're, we also have monthly guest expert trainings where we have to do a live session with someone who's just going to talk with us about how to develop a part of our, our YouTube business, our audience. Um, last, last month we talked about uh, LinkedIn, using video on LinkedIn. How can we use video on LinkedIn to really grow our audiences and our influence there? So a lot of cool stuff, but let's get into some of your questions here and, and answer some of the questions that you guys have about some of these articles, some of these articles and things that we talked about here today. So Dylan's, um, well, let's talk about the super chats first. Hey.com, th- Dane, $5. Thank you. He says, Tim is awesome. Thank you. And then Cine Hotties, $2. Can you and Peter Hollins do another collab? Yes, we have one. Uh, we're shooting it together in uh, three weeks. So I don't know when it'll go, go public, like on our channels, but we're both doing one to, we're both featuring each other. So that'll, that'll, we're shooting that together in person in a few weeks here. Okay. Thank you for the $2. So Dylan Woodworks question. Is there any sign that Google might allow YouTube to have their app on fire stick there is always a chance you know i i think that amazon and youtube kind of have a little spat and that um you know they both want people to use their service and their platform so um fire stick doesn't like chromecast you can't buy chromecast um google's chromecast little dongle on amazon and so google doesn't want their youtube on the fire stick you know so it's kind of this back and forth they kind of want people to buy into their ecosystem and not into each other so you know there's yeah it's always could happen but uh they haven't figured that out yet Wolf Pack uh, Woodcraft asks, do you think YouTube TV will pull away from YouTube itself, making it harder to grow? Um, YouTube TV is already pretty separate from YouTube. It's uh, They're pretty two different platforms, uh, different feature sets. Um, there's no commenting on YouTube TV. Uh, there, You can follow uh, like a TV show and get notifications about it. But there's not like a subscribe button there like there would be on YouTube. Um, It's just kind of like a record follow type of like button. Uh, So they are pretty different. It's just that YouTube TV does feature some YouTube content in there. But it mostly tends, from what I've seen, mostly tends to be YouTube originals. um, Like YouTube Red originals are in there. And... um, stuff from their top creators i've already proven to have a broad appeal like Rhett and link is in there um there, you know i see a lot of them pop it up and there's um, a lot of like what's trending on youtube happens to be in there and that's kind of like youtube's 
revenue stream actually for YouTube TV because they're not gonna make a lot of money on $35 a month per subscriber and all the licensing fees that they're paying and the content. So if they're if they're making anything, it's like very, very little. Um, I'm assuming they're probably taking a little bit of a loss on it. Not, I don't, I'm making assumptions here. I'm making this up in my mind just based on what I've read and heard. Um, they're taking a little bit of a loss on it financially and making it up and getting more people over onto the YouTube side. People who would normally just watch TV and not watch YouTube, this is kind of like their gateway. So, and I think it's a great one. Uh, on the Super Bowl commercial, you guys see the, the commercial for YouTube TV? Um, I, I thought it was well done. It did a good pitch for this is how you can still get all the shows that you normally watch without paying a hundred plus dollars a month for cable. You can still get all your live sports, get all your shows, unlimited DVR, and you can share it with up to six people in your household. And I, I was like, wow, that looked good. I think I should sign up for that. Oh, I already am. Like now I remember why. And I, I do like the service personally. And it is the only streaming service outside of YouTube itself that I have found actually has the content that I want to watch and keep up with. So I do like it. Let's see. Uh, Vantastic. How can a gaming channel prepare for YouTube TV? Setting up a series seems to be difficult for gaming. Any other tips? I, I don't think I would focus right now on making YouTube TV like a high priority strategy for your channel growth. I There is much more opportunity inside the YouTube platform that currently is here than trying to set up, you know, or even prepare for something on YouTube TV. It, YouTube TV is still in its early stages and uh, they are integrating YouTube content into it, but it's a little bit early to see how it works for those of us who are growing our channels and not like the 10 million subscriber plus channels on, uh, on YouTube that have broad appeal. So I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about that too much right now. We love stories. Is YouTube Go free if YouTube Red charges and allows downloading? Yes, YouTube Go is free. So the, the app is free, I should say. I'm not saying there's not advertisements in there and some sponsorships and things like that, but the app itself is a free download. So yes. Scott Hervio, Photography. Art and more. Wow, it's a long channel name. <laughs> Sorry, I kept, I kept going there. If they download the video and watch over and over, will it connect and up the view counts each time? I'm assuming yes. Uh, and the watch time that it accumulates, if they, I mean, I must, I don't know for for a fact, but just knowing Google and how they are with data and the, it, like it would be, it would make sense for that to happen. So I don't see how it would not happen really, but I don't have any uh, hard data on that. I haven't asked them that question personally to find out. So, but that that's my assumption. So those are the big updates that happened, guys. Um, I would love to have you join our podcast if you're not already, if it's your first time listening. We've got new episodes every Monday, or every Tuesday on Spotify, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Google Play. Just search for Video Creators. You'll find it. And we'll be here again next time, next week, live streaming at youtube.com slash video creators at 1 p.m. Eastern time. We'd love to have you join you for listening to the audio of this. Come hang out with us in the live chat. There's hundreds of people here just kind of talking and, and having a great, great time together and learning from each other. So I appreciate all of you guys who are part of the community. Thanks for hanging out. And I look forward to seeing you guys again next week for another Video Creators podcast episode and live stream. See you guys then. Bye.